Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And I'm going to solicit your help for a pen repair. So let's take a look at what's inked up this week. From left to right, I have a Mont Blanc 32. Uh, yes, I own one Mont Blanc. <laughs> I have a Platinum 3776. I have a Pen BBS 355. A Waterman Karen. Selector Purple and Black, that's what I'm calling it. A Geha Futura 714. Geha Boy. Parker Challenger, uh, Reform 4328, Toes Mirna, and sitting off to the side without a tag for some reason, well, there is a reason, is my Montpel Monterosa. Uh, that, this was this week's review. The Parker Challenger was this week's first impression. And we'll get into why the Montpel Monterosa is sitting off to the side and why I don't classify it with this Mont Blanc. As always, I'll be doing my, doing my writing samples in my BOMO art journal. So let's see how they write. So I thought my, uh, deal, my first pen was going to be its last week because it was almost out of ink. It was going to be a Pilot Justice 95. I was using that as my daily writer pen. But for better or for worse, it ran out of ink. And so, I mean, it literally ran out of ink this evening. <laughs> so, I quickly thought, well, I'm experimenting with different pens as daily writers, so I haven't used this pen in a while. This is a Mobile 32 with an extra fine nib. Uh, yeah, I own a pen with the infamous bird splat on each end. A real Mobile. This is from the 1960s. So, if you're into the Mobile thing, you're interested, um, but you don't like the prices you may have better luck with vintage. I've heard good things about some of their steel nibs, too. This one, of course, is a gold nib. And I can't think of anything in their current lineup, not that I know too many of them, but nothing that I've seen, anyway, that reminds me of this pen at all. And I haven't written with this pen in a long time. I don't know why, but I haven't. And uh, pulling it out and using it has reminded me what a good writer it is. It's a nice, slim, black, vintage pen. And I'm trying to use up that bottle of Lamy Black. I just want to get my number of bottles down and emptying that one out will take up a lot less uh, horizontal space unless I refill it with something which is always possible so this really isn't a pen in use it is more the pen that will be in use next week but like I said the pilot justice kicked the bucket on me just a little bit before I was ready to film uh, my next pen is a Platinum 3776. Uh, the dry winter weather has brought up an old problem I haven't seen in a long time. It must be shrinking due to the weather. And the band is not. And I'm not sure of a glue I trust to put on there, so uh, I'm just being careful. Uh, one thing I'm not doing is taking the pen with me to work. It stays home where it, if the ring gets lost, at least it's lost in the house. And the pen's almost empty anyway. Uh, the ink is Montegrappa. Bordeaux. One of the inks I like. The, right here it seems a little darker than normal. I, I think because the pen's been sitting here at home, I haven't been writing with it as much, and it maybe has dried out a little bit. Which is kind of a 
steel, I guess celluloid, isn't quite as evaporation resistant as some other plastics. That's a pretty old fashioned plastic and uh, and this particular pen does not have the slip and seal that lower cost 3776s would have. Uh, oh, I should also mention, I'm going to bring this up here in a few minutes, but worth pointing out as a point of comparison in case I forget. You see that? That seam? So right there, what this would have been is a sheet of celluloid that was rolled to make the pen and cut and sealed together. Uh, some people don't like that. You know, they think it looks cheap or low cost or whatever. It doesn't bother me. But I'm going to show you something similar to that here in just a minute. Um, my next pen will probably be inked up like practically forever because it holds a gob of ink. This is a Pen BBS 355. This is kind of like the Conid Bulk Feller, only uh, one less digit in its price. <laughs> um, that was my fault, not the pen skipping there. The nib in it is Nemesine. Good luck finding these now. Broad. And I happen to buy, I wish I'd bought more now, but I only bought one set, a full set of the Nemesine reentry nibs, which are these just beautiful, beautiful nibs, especially if you're into metalworking. Uh, the ink in it is Califolio Granat. And I showed you in last week's pens in use that they are very similar, but when you do a um, paper chromatography with them, this one has some much brighter components. Next, I have a little piece of excitement. I've shared it last week, but it's still exciting. Uh, in fact, I just saw... I don't remember who it was. Some pen reviewer, anyway, this week. Stephen Brown. It was Stephen Brown. Reviewed uh, a Waterman Karen with a broad nib on it, which is labeled with an L. Now... I could delude myself and say he got the idea from me showing mine off, but I'm pretty sure he didn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had uh, bought this a while back, and because and I've had the Karen for a while, if you click on the review, which is linked down below, you'll actually see it with this nib on it, with a medium. But uh, I was able to find a broad, so... I bought it, except it's French for broad, which, oh, it's a French word that escapes me because I ne never took French in high school. So this is Kyoiro Higashiyama Moonlight. Nothing about this color seems very moonlighty, but uh, the, the names of this line of ink are actually all in reference to a certain area around Japan. So, I'm sure it makes sense in context. You know, when I think moonlight, I think of a very muted colors. Maybe with some dark shading. A lot of these Kyoiro's Kyo are a little more muted, but... Oh, God, you didn't see any of that. <laughs> muted orange! All right, this, I remember filming this video and I just, how impressed I was. And thanks to uh, a very alert viewer and YouTuber, um, ChrisRap52, I noticed something about this pen that I'd never seen before. Uh, now, he didn't spot it on this pen. He spotted it on another pen that I'm going to bring up. But remember the seam I showed you here? 
This, and it's hard to see. This has a seam too, but it's not a straight seam. So look here. Right there. Now follow it back. Hard to see there because it's black. But the, yeah, and then you can see it again right here because the, oh, that was my shadow. But right here, you can see that line again. Down on the barrel, I had a harder time spotting it. There. Trace it back. Then we'll follow it around. So, I didn't even know they did rolled celluloid like that. So when he pointed it out on the Parker Challenger, I was like, no, I didn't see that. And I looked the pen over and over and over looking for a seam. I was like, yeah, not seeing it, dude. And then he did a close-up picture, and finally I saw it. So, yeah, I'm kind of a dumbass. Oh, and this pen may be empty, too. Uh, come to think of it, it is empty. <laughs> I, I was so excited about noticing that on the Parker Challenger, I just kind of assumed I would be watching it on this pen, but I guess not. Let's see if I can get coax a little ink out of it. No, all I'm managing to do is clean a little. I'm going to just press the button over a paper towel off screen here and we'll see what you get. What I get. Okay, it's not even dripping when I press the button, see? So, that, that guy's dry. Doggone it. I'm proud of myself because this was a good example of something I was going to talk about after I finish filming the writing. Guess not. So I feel like I must have emptied it out and set it aside, meaning to take it to the kitchen to clean it, and then I didn't take it to the kitchen to clean it. All right, on a non-celluloid front, a Geha 714. This has a steno nib on it. Uh, the ink in it is Lamy Blue. Almost empty. I am actually surprised how often I reached for this pen since I inked it up. Well, is it not this week? Last week, because I filmed the video on Sunday. But I actually really like writing with this pen. So, what the heck? Uh, my next pen is a Geha Boy. Boy! With a fun little green Deeble Dauber. And, where is it? There it is. Geha Boy here. Finial, not Deeble Dauber. Wow. Um, I don't even have the excuse of it being too late because it's only 7.45. One thing I'm finding is I'm quite often hitting that switch on this pen. The one on the Futura is a lot... Oh, I didn't write that here. Futura is a lot harder to push. This is just a plain ordinary steel nib. Uh, it's not even a steno nib. It's, it's This is a student pen. Uh, ink in it is Monteverde. Canyon Rust. Which, uh, I, I like some other colors in this family better. Like uh, Noodler's Antietam or uh, Diamine Ancient Copper. But this is still a very nice color. And yes, I live in southwestern North Dakota out in the middle of the prairie, but I have a huge soft spot for the southwestern U.S. I loved my trip through 
well, kind of through Wyoming, but more through Utah, Colorado, um, Arizona, New Mexico. I just had a blast on that trip, and some of the canyons I saw and things. And of course, it was before I had the dash cam, before I had a digital camera even. Uh, so I don't have much footage of that trip. But uh, I want to do it again. I think, well, I, I think I want a car that's not 20 years old to do it again, but I do want to do it again. My next pen is from this week's first impression, a Parker Challenger. And this is the one that Chris Rap 52 pointed out that, hey, didn't you even notice the seam? Like, no, I didn't. But there it is, the same kind of spiral seam. And it kind of disappears in the dark bits. And same thing on the barrel. See if I can find it here. It's here, I just have to locate it. Oh God. There it is. Okay. So it starts about here. Follows along. And wraps around the barrel. So it's a thing. I just did not realize celluloid was ever rolled that way, so I learned something. Uh, when I first wrote with this pen this week for the review, I felt it was a little stingy with the ink. And I'll admit, it's not a particularly wet pen. A few people suggested to me that maybe I should try a different ink in it, and I agree. But it's become a wetter pen since Monday when I filmed its video. Klinger, not Klinger. Uh, Alt Goldgrün, which is an interesting color. Doing one of these swatches every week would definitely run the ink down. Now before I leave that pen, a while back I did a review of this black pen, which is a Parker Dual Fold Economy model. And now look at the clips. I think that puts them in about the same era. Uh, the date code is... I don't... I, there might be one here on the black one. But I... Really struggled to make it out. Even with a loop. You know, that pen is seen somewhere. This one is second quarter 1940. I know I was slightly unsure when I filmed it, although I added footage after filming the, to show you the close-up of the, which you can barely see here, of the zero with two dots on it. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting to share those two. Uh, my next pen, second to last, penultimate. There we go, penultimate Dave. Uh, <laughs> uh, my second to last pen is a Reform... 4328, which is, if you're looking for good vintage flex in a relatively easy to find pen, this would be one. Uh, these, these vintage Bach nibs are just a great hint that you're going to get good flex. If you're into that kind of thing. You know, for me, it kind of depends on what I'm doing. Uh, there's a reason why I thought of that Mont Blanc 32 as my daily writer rather than, say, 
this or the Monte Rosa because it doesn't have much flex at all. So interesting, very nice color and a very nice pen. And finally, one ex surviving example of what I was talking about. I know it's surviving because uh, this one I can actually see the ink window. Um, my Toes Pencala Mirna. Which has a very nice tortoise shell finish in the middle. And then kind of brownish reddish ends. So a nice Croatian pen to finish this off. TOES stands for uh, Pencil Factory of Zagreb, which is in Croatia. This has a medium nib. I don't know, would you call that semi-hooded? Maybe? I'm not sure how to classify it. Uh, my ink in here is Girbon. Lie de te. Lie de the. See, it sounds better in French. <laughs> you know, browns aren't my go to ink color. But it certainly is a nice looking color. Now I have a couple of other things I just want to talk about briefly before I show you my face again. One of the things I wanted to talk about, I, I was asked about, do you, well do you empty out your pens every week and just change them for new ones? Well no. Uh, you, you can see if you watch my videos for a while that sometimes the same pens appear for several weeks. This one has been appearing for a few weeks and is probably going to appear for another few weeks unless I get bored with it. Which brings up the other side. You didn't see... Did you see this pen last week? No, you didn't. So you didn't see this pen last week. Apparently I did an ink, empty it out though. You didn't see this pen last week. Uh, if I get bored with a pen, I'll set it aside. Most pens don't dry out that quickly. There are a few. That select door, I think, was actually empty. Um, so in, you just set them aside for a week or two and uh, ink up something else. So I usually have a few more pens inked than I show. Another thing that happens is, and it's not happening right now because I'm, thanks to that computer disaster over my holiday break, I, I uh, haven't gotten ahead on my videos, but usually I have a few pens inked up that I've filmed the footage, but have not actually published it, so I don't show the pens on this show. But like this one, I'm hopefully going to fil film tonight yet. This is a Muñeca pen from Argentina. It's uh, from the Eva Peron, Peron era. So, uh, you know, if I don't publish it next week, you'll have the uh, reassurance of knowing that it is inked up. Um, another one I want to film real soon here is this Astura 82. Uh, this has, let's, let me, let's see if I can find it again. It had the seam on the celluloid, but I lost the seam. There it is. There. See a seam in the celluloid. Uh, I'll be, uh, actually I want to talk about this one. This one's a little bit different. This is a Caveco Transparent 55G, but this is here for a different reason. And I have a Reform... What is it? Reform 431... 4351, I think. Don't remember. I have it written down, so I won't forget what it is. And unlike the Reform you saw tonight, this has an actual Reform nib. So, uh, but I wanted to talk about two other pens real quick. Oh, yeah, and a review I want to do this week is this Senator. Uh, I saw ODE tried to do a review of a Senator, and he ran into the same problem I do, which is he can't 
find model numbers or names, so he just calls him Senator. This is what I call Senator Crack Blind Cap. Uh, with the impeachment hearings going on in the Senate, maybe I should be careful about doing Senator Pen reviews. People who accuse me of getting political. But anyway, I'm hoping to film a video of that one, a review. Uh, I'm starting to run out of pens that had appeared in pens in use uh, that are due for reviews. I uh, Because my goal eventually is to get to the point where I film first impressions. And then later on in life with those pens, I f film a full formal review. Uh, but... I had, a no I had a number of pens that I'd already bought before I started doing this, so they need reviews. Uh, they don't fit with first impressions because I wouldn't be giving a first impression. Now this is another pen I'm going to be filming a first impression of. This is the Caveco 55G. I thought this one was worth bringing up because I, I want to do that f series on pen restoration. I filmed a little footage, but not enough to make a real pen video out of yet. Uh, but this is interesting. So you look at it. I did film a video a few weeks ago of a, of a Caveco 37G. Well, this has been hovering around, and I thought, well, I need to film its first impression too. And everything looked good till I did this. And it definitely felt scratchy. So then, you know, I do this. Yeah, that's scratchy. So the first thing I look for is misaligned tines. Now, I don't have the best eye for that, but I have an aid to my eye. Well, let's see if I can successfully do this. Hit the switch. So this aid to my eye, this... Oops. Oh, this is horrible. So we got Caveco... 14 carat, 585, all that. Okay, it looks slightly off, like maybe I could do something with that. But that's not what bothered me. Flip it over. And tell me if this is my imagination. Does that look a little rough to you? So, this loop enables me to get a little more magnification. Ha, I didn't know if I could actually do this. Okay, this is hard though. Let's try it the other way. I'm right-handed. Now you know something about me. Uh, I kind of knew that because I've been watching you right. This might be too hard to do. Well, maybe you can. This isn't the greatest. I can see it better with my naked eye. But anyway, that's really rough. So I feel like maybe the nib could be straightened just a tiny bit. But the bigger problem is the, the roughness on the back of the feed. I mean, looking at it through the loop, it almost looked like somebody had gone at it with a sandpaper or something because normal nibs don't look like that i mean let me just grab my muñeca which is a cheap pen no no slam against the pen it just is and uh steel nib smooth i grab any one of these pens laying here that's going to be smooth but this caveco 55g Sweet spot, for sure, and sandpaper, although a little too poorly lit for you to see that well. So uh, that's one of the areas I'm looking for advice. You know, I, I've never been brave enough to do nib smoothing, and if I do decide to try it, I'm definitely going to practice on, you know, platinum preppies and jet pens, chibis first. Uh, but anyway. Uh, so if you have any advice on that, you know, I've looked at the videos and stuff. I just never have done 
well, ever have actually done it before. The other thing that came up was um, with this pen. Let me grab the right, right one here. I left this one setting to the side. This was this week's first impression. Or no, sorry, review. And you may have noticed I never actually wrote with it tonight. And there's a reason. It's because I emptied it out. Literally, I took out the nib and everything. Um, because I had an interesting suggestion in the comments. That's one of the reasons I like to do this. I don't have a community locally that I can go to for advice on pens, so I rely on the internet. Um, now, internet comments on a YouTube video maybe isn't your best source of advice, but it can point you to sources of advice to look at. And this person suggested before I try heat setting it, take a look at the nib collar. So in a Monte Rosa, at least mine, it just screws in. And this person suggested that it might be cracked. So now we've got that focused fairly close up. See that? There is indeed a hairline crack. Now, uh, I'd kind of like to fix that. One of the things that occurs to me is to get some glue, you know, super glue. I'm not 100% sure what I want to use yet. That's part of the advice I'm soliciting. You know, I have some model glue that I use in Science Olympiad, uh, but use some glue and try to glue that. I don't know. Can you buy nib collars like this? I did a quick search and didn't come up with anything, but that doesn't mean they're not out there. I don't know, but that might be the reason for the gap that I pointed out in the video and a few people noticed. Oh gosh. Anyway, between the nib and the feed here. And that's why it'll move around so much. I mean, that makes sense to me. So. That's the other area I really want to solicit some advice. What do I do with a crack like that? So now you know my dirty little secret about how I have so many different pens and pens in use. Uh, I have more pens ink than you see every week. I just put some of them down for a nap or they're pens that just haven't been published yet. So I feel like uh, well, I can't show them to you in pens in use till they've actually had their own video. So uh, that's how I do it. I, I don't waste ink. I will admit the Monte Rosa got emptied out early because I wanted to know about the crack. I, I, if you saw my fingers, they're kind of yellow because of doing that. I, uh, yeah, it's cracked. So that's the one little behind the scenes trick to this. I don't like to waste ink. Uh, I do run through ink fairly quickly. It always surprises me how quickly I can run through it until I'm trying to get a bottle to go empty. Then it seems to take forever. But individual pens seem to empty out very quickly unless they are bulk fillers, like the pen BBS. But uh, anyway, uh, I also showed you a couple of pens with, well, I'm looking for a little bit of device on repair. Uh, so if you can help me with that, please comment down below. And, uh, well, on two personal notes, uh, next, I'm, wh while you're watching this, the reason it's late... Uh, I want to say it's supposed to be published at 9 o'clock my time, uh, was because I decided, you know, I'll be back at the motel by then because my plan next week is to be in Spearfish. Well, this week. Why you watch this? I will respond to this, sorry, as a premiere from Spearfish, and then next week we'll do a Pens on the Road that I'll film some footage in and around Spearfish. I have an oil oil change planned in the morning, and other than that, the day is mine, because I'm taking this Saturday off, because I didn't take a day off last weekend when I actually had a vacation day, so I'm taking one this week, plus I feel like, now I feel like I need it, I had, uh, okay, we'll get personal here for a minute, I had a friend die on Friday last week, um, she was 85, and it was not a surprise, uh, she had cancer and uh it had come back and you know we knew it was a matter of time i got to say goodbye to her on thursday night 
there was a possibility, I suppose, that she could have rallied and come back th- after that Thursday night, but I just had the feeling that, no, this is the end. You know, you don't say that, but, yeah, I I was pretty sure. So, uh, yeah, we lost a, a good person on Friday, and I was at the funeral on Wednesday. Um, I was actually part of the funeral. You know, our family seems to have sort of adopted me. <laughs> um and I'll just, uh, I've taught a lot of her grandchildren. A few more years here, I'll start teaching her great-grandchildren. Um, two of her, four, sorry, four of her great-grandchildren live just across the street over there. Um, but yeah, just a great lady. Uh, she was a rancher most of her life. She lost her own mother uh, at a very young age. And she kind of became the mom for her siblings. And then uh, mom for her own kids and her grandkids and great grandkids. Uh, the last few years is her health, you know, before the cancer, but other issues came up. When you're in your 80s, that just happens. I had forced her to move into town, and uh, over the last, uh, I don't know, year or so, she's been in the nursing home because her health had gotten to that point. So, uh, you know, her mind stayed good right up to the end, so I'm happy about that. And, uh, you know, I'm glad uh, we are able to give her a good send-off. So, on that depressing note, um, you know, it's... I, death is a part of life, the way I look at it, and uh, I can't imagine being the person that everybody says, Yes, he's gone! Uh, I think it's a good legacy that there are so many people that will miss you not just family but friends and people around that you've touched their lives Uh, that's always a good legacy that when you're gone uh, it just shows the impact you've had and you know she had a good impact so uh now that's what we can all hope for you know when i go i don't know what's going to happen with the pens but i won't care because i'll be dead (laughs) um but uh You know, that's what I would hope for myself and for anybody I care about is that they be remembered and people are sad that they're gone. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I guess uh, there's a little hope in that uh, because we'll all face it at some point in our life. Um, We probably already have. You know, it has me thinking about my own parents. They're not too far behind her and uh, isn't it's going to happen that I'm going to have to face these things with them too. So, uh, anyway, um, now I'm sounding more like a driving video, so I better stop talking about it now. Uh, so anyway, next week, uh, look forward to a pens on the road from Spearfish, South Dakota. And, uh, now it's too late to tell you, tell you to stay tuned for the premiere of this video because, uh, If you didn't know it was premiering, too late now. (laughs) So, I want to thank you for watching. And, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, uh, yeah, in the comments, if you have any advice, especially on that Caveco with the really scratchy nib, maybe you saw something I didn't, because apparently that happens, (laughs) uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, um... You know, if you've had some thoughts about the meaning of life or a life well lived, that could be an interesting topic as well. Uh, So, I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.